What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Coming at you, well, <laughs> with another Marco Watch today. Before we go with the Marco Watch, I want to say I have a brand new website. Shopify was giving me some issues, so I decided to create another brand new website. And the past couple of days, this is really pretty much all I've been working on. Uh, the website does feature all the field centers I currently have uh, available and those I don't have available. Uh, same with the tokens, by the way. So this website is going to be, I'll make it available soon. Uh, and you can go over and check out all the uh, the tokens, all the field centers, everything soon. So keep an eye out for that. I will have a link updated with this website. Uh, for those that, that did pre-buy uh, the uh, uh, got involved in a pre-sale for the field center and tokens. I should actually be getting them. So I was supposed to be getting them on the 10th, but I actually might be getting them early. I might be getting them either today or tomorrow. So uh, I'll make a live stream when that goes on. So make sure to go ahead and check me out on Twitch, Twitch TV, YJ underscore Paisano, uh, and check it out because it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, right into the market watch. Um, looking at a bunch of cards, uh, one of the cards I want to point out specifically is Ab Lenitus, the Abyss Dragon. This card, for the most part, is not seeing that much play. Uh, it could be cut for a lot of reasons, but my personal reason for the reason why this card, I don't think this card's gonna see as much play, uh, is because it's not needed. With that said, the card has a current price point of eleven dollars. It's still dropping, by the way. A uh, starting rate version of this card starts roughly around hundred and four dollars. The value of Ablanches is really just been tanking lately, and I mean you can go over here and see. The, on TC Play, it started roughly around $244. It lets you add a polymerization normal spell, a fusion normal spell, uh, but it's just not needed. We already have a monster that does that, and the monster's been reprinted, so I do like Ablanitis. I think it's a great card, great against dragons. Is dragons making a comeback? If they do, this card will see play. Should you play one card in your branded deck? You let me know. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I don't hate this card, but I don't know if this card is worth it. Comment down below. Let me know if you do play Brandon. Is Ablent going to be seen in your deck? And if it's not, give me the reason why. Because I think it's pretty much the same reason. Looking at Theron King Regulus, wow. This card has been on a bit of a roller coaster ride. Uh, coming off roughly around $70, going as high as $87, the value now is dropping to roughly around $70. What's happening? Well, simple. Those who wanted to get Theron King Regulus got in early, and the price pretty much held for that. It sustained for a good amount of time. After a while, th those who that don't want Theron King Regulus, or maybe I kind of want it, will eventually go back in and grab it. But why grab it right now? I'm like, it makes no sense. Why pay this price point? The value of the card is going down, right? Um, yes and no. I think when U.S. Nationals is coming through soon, this card price point may, if not if not stabilized, might actually increase in value. A lot of decks I've seen from the previous YCS are using this card. It's not just used in Strikers, it's used also in a bunch of other decks. Mainly the Punk Variations and ABCs. Two decks which have a great matchup against a lot of decks in the meta. I think in order to combat a card like Mystic Mind, one of the best ways to do it, besides having an uh, Omni Gate like Therry King Regulus, is also to play Adventures. And we, we see that in ABCs. So, I think this is a great card, but is it worth the value? That's really confusing. You see, Therry King Regulus, Starlight Rare, is roughly around, what, 210? So, here's, here's the thing. You could buy one Starlight or three Secret Rares. Now, here's the weird part about this. The Secret Rares will ultimately get reprinted and they'll go down in value. We know this, right? This is not, like, debatable. Secret Rares of almost anything gets re reprinted and goes down in value. If a Secret Rare has a Starlight or a counterpart, like we've seen here with Theory King Regulus, what's going to happen? Well, the Starlight Rare will not only maintain value, but more than likely spike in value as the set gets out of out of rotation. Once again, if you can't get it at your local OTS, if you can't get it at your local uh, your Walmarts, uh, Darren King Regulus will be going up in value for the Starlight Rare. So it might spike a little bit, Starlight Rare will spike. So with that said, what do you buy? Well, if you can afford the Starlight Rare, it is so dirt cheap. It's It's almost... I feel like you're robbing the person when you're buying it at this price point, if you want my honest opinion. This is a phenomenal card, and we'll still see play for a, the foreseeable future. So I think Derby King Regulus is a phenomenal card, and I do think it's a great card to pick up right now. Alright, one thing that's not being talked about as much is Dino Wrestler Prankatops. Now you can go ahead and get Dino Wrestler Prankatops out of Bowser Legends Heroes Revenge. The price point is going down. The card's dropping around 2-3 bucks for the Seeker Rare. Obviously, there is a collector's, collector's rare version, but that price point also has been going down. Its peak was roughly around $133, and if you look over here right now, the price point is $110. Why am I saying Dino Wrestling of Prankatops? Why does this card even matter? Simple. 
Pankatops is a phenomenal card used in slower metas, used against trying to control the meta, and more importantly, used against an even exchange. If you're trying to go even and exchange on your opponent, why are you doing that? More than likely, you're trying to either play A, a combo deck to get rid of a floodgate, so you're, you're okay with going one for one against a floodgate, or two, you're trying to play a deck that which, in which you want to enter that like top deck uh, game state. You want to enter that, we're both blown out, top deck game state, let's go. And Donovan and Pankatops is one of the best cards to draw in that game state. Your opponent gets a monster on board, Prankatops, swing over. Now whatever they put on board, you can pop over Prankatops. It's It really puts you in a great position. I think Dynamax and Prankatops is a phenomenal card right now, and I wouldn't be surprised if the value starts slowly increasing as you can play realize this is one of the greatest cards to use, definitely in the side deck at the very least. Solemn Warning is a phenomenal card that was used back in like 2006 or something like that. Listen, this card started to see play in the OCG. They're actually side decking this card, and they're not like one, they're doing it at three. Solemn Morning right now, Ultimate Rare First Edition is gonna run you roughly around $112. By the way, after that one sold, it's $120. After that one sold, $135 to $140, you get the message. There's not many Solemn Mornings in the market, and every time a Solemn Morning buy is done, the value of Solemn Morning drastically increases. To be honest with you, I don't know if this is going to see play or not. And yes, this is the highest rarity version of Solemn Warning. If you're, if you're wondering, hey V, is there a cheaper version but still good? Of course. I mean, besides the dual sleep promos that are just insanely hard to find, you can still get uh, the dual, so a dual saga version of Solemn Warning. A great card. It's slowly rising on values so far so over here. By the way, right, wrote Risen within the past week. Uh, but the value is still dirt cheap. It's roughly around three bucks. I personally have a playset of the so dual saga Solemn Warnings, and I swear by them. They're beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I love Ultimate Rare, I love High Rarity, and I, and I love the Max Rarity decks. But Solemn Warning Ultimate Rare, and if anyone has this, you can, you can attest to this, it has the weakest card stock I've ever seen in my life. Dual Saga Solemn Warning, clean. I mean, the picture looks clean, the card's strong, strong card stock. I just like that when I'm shuffling my deck, I like that when I'm sleeping my deck. I don't want to worry about bending an Ultimate Rare, because the card stock is made in Bible paper. Like, it, it, it just annoys me. <laughs> Nightmare Unicorn's another card that I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players need to start getting as the price point is slowly increasing. Look at this chart from $75, uh, and it's still roughly around $75, but the market is showing it rising. Why is that? Well, Nightmare Unicorn wasn't seeing much play before, and arguably Nightmare Phoenix as well. Cards that adjust the impact, CRs are value. We know this already. I mean, the live twin stuff is value all day long because of Splite, but Unicorn and Phoenix are two cards that I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players kind of just forgot about. This is the highest rarity version of these cards, and these cards are definitely going to only increase. With Nightmare Unicorn having 35 listings and Nightmare Phoenix having 29 listings, the value of these will only decrease as the amount of Yu-Gi-Oh players that are going to want this, obviously, is going to increase. Who wants to bling out Ultra Rares? You know what I'm saying? So I think Unicorn and Phoenix are definitely cards a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are going to run to, and the market will obviously will increase. Oh, yes. Guys, gang for life. All right. Um, I'm throwing it out there right now. I'm a big fan of Ulta Geist. I know everyone's like, whatever. Oh, no, Geist is a horrible card. Um, as I artifact slap my opponent, drop Mystic Mind. Listen, Geist Gang is a phenomenal deck right now. It's so good. And let me explain. Geist has a great matchup just, just about against anything except multiple Omni Negate decks. That is the only issue for Geist. And that's, they're not, like, multiple Omni Negate decks aren't, as bad, there's still a pain. There's probably a pain to uh, it's a, more of an uphill battle. But the meta right now is not that. The meta right now is mostly a lot of you can players setting up to kill you on the next turn. Well, Geist is that deck that sets up to control you on the next turn. So against a deck like Branded, all the guys is the go-to answer. Think about it. Oh, you you you're gonna bring out your um your Mirror Jade. Cool, bounce it. And I have protocol, so this does happen. Like. Absolutely brutal. I think guys is super underrepresented right now in the Yu-Gi-Oh meta because not a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players realize controlling the game's good. Strikers did win the YCS, and yes, they went over stick mine, but Strikers did use striker cards to control that game state. Guys can do it better. Alt alternatively, guys can play around Mystic Mind. They have a card called Personal Spoofing, which cycles guys back into the deck, lets you add the new new Alter Guys monster. Guys can not only both play around Mystic Mind, but they can play with Mystic Mind. Another cool thing, because since all guys are spellcaster monsters, is they can use Secret Vigil as a spellcaster, which is a great card. If I have a spellcaster and you don't, guess what? You can't play spells, says Ultigeist. Mashes up against a deck like, I don't know, Sky Strikers, a deck like uh, Branded. 
Can you fusion someone without playing a fusion spell? All right, show me. If not, GG. <laughs> I think Altergeist is a phenomenal deck right now. And once again, it's super not I'm underrepresented. Nobody's looking at it right now. Pot of Extravagance did get a reprint as a common. Altergeist is, to me, I think is a go-to deck for a lot of you good players that don't want to spend a lot of money, but want to smoke those stupid smug players that do spend a lot of money and are smug about it. Don't get me wrong. I spend a lot of dough, but I'm not smug about it. I just want to be that guy. Um, but there are people out there, and I've seen them uh, go, I'll activate my Starlight Red Triple Tiger's Talents. <laughs> cool. I'll bounce it with my common... Uh, 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 I'll bounce it with my... I mean, whatever. What's the lowest rarity version of multi -fake? Ultra Rare? Is, is it Ultra Rare? I'll, I'll use my... <laughs> I'll use my Maximum Gold Eldorado multi -faker effect and bounce it. Actually, I know multi -faker doesn't do it. I know it's Siliquis, but multi -faker gets the job done. I'm using a regular rare multi faker. Yeah, it's not worth a lot of money, but it gets the job done. All right. Looking at this, if you are looking to play Ultra Guys, you're obviously going to need Artemis, the Magic's Moon Maiden. This card is really, really, really needed in the deck. Uh, you can argue, well, v, you know, you can use Link Creep on. You're not wrong. Link Creep was good. But Artemis is also an excellent card to play. If you want to buy the Ultra Rares, it's $16. This card needs a reprint, Konami. Uh, the Artemis, the Magic's Moon Maiden for CR versions have only been increasing. As you can see over here, the price point of this card starts off roughly around $71. So $71 or 16 but I definitely think this is a needed card for that. This is a good card. Not long ago, I talked about Deck Devastation Virus and how the fact that a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players might want to start picking this card up. This card, Legend Collection Kyber, right now, well, it's slowly rising. It's roughly around $7. Now, you might go, V, that's a lot of money, but look at the chart. It's rising because Yu-Gi-Oh players in the OCG are playing this card to counter decks like Splite. It's really good against them. And Deck Devastation Virus is not only really good against them, but it's almost, to me, a game changing card. But I think it's a card that you're going to want to go ahead and grab. Now, you don't need to buy the Ultra Rare. You don't need to buy the Ultra Rare. It comes common in a structure that gets to the Underworld, a Gold Series, a Lair Darkness. Uh, you get this common all over the place. But if you want a nice rarity that's not Ultimate Rare, insanely expensive, Deck Devastation Virus at Legend Collection Kyber is dirt cheap right now. And I do think it's a good price to pick this card up at, as it will increase in value. Once again, once the Ultimate Rare is sold out or hard to get, Yu Gi Oh! players tend to go to the second highest. They've always done this. And the Ultra Rare Legend Collection Kyber, Legend Collection cards are worth money. But Legend Collection Kyber, this is the one everyone's going to be running to. Hey, does anyone play Ignistus by you? If you want to break Ignister players down easily and win the game on the spot, you're going to want to go ahead and grab Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. This card right now, currently with a price point roughly around $35, is quickly rising to $37, $38, relatively fast within a couple of sales. Why is that? Because this is, is a problem. And Yu-Gi-Oh! players need to acknowledge how to beat the outs, how to break the problem. And one of the ways to do it is Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Your opponent has a wall, you break it with this card. Exactly this card is the card you need to break it. I think it's an excellent card, and I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players are really not understanding how good of a card this is right now in the game. I would recommend everybody who can pick this up, go ahead and pick it up. For those who have it already, well, it's money. And do you sell it? Well, if you do, if you're playing Nisters. But other than that, no, you hold it. I hate Cat Shark. No, I don't hate the picture. I like the artwork of the card. It's adorable. It's a cat. It's a shark. I get it. I'm in. But I hate Premium Gold. Add it to the counter! Uh, Premium Gold Return of Bling is probably the most atrocious Gold Rare set I've ever seen in my life. It's a set made for those that have a combination of astigmatism and just clout in their eye. Uh, it just looks absolutely abhorrent. With that said, Catshark is a card being used in Splite, but it's going down in value. Why? Well, we're not going to be getting Splite to the end of the year. That's a fact. More than likely, Konami's going to reprint Catshark because, let's be honest with you, they need to. <laughs> um, current price, price point of Catshark right now is roughly around $7. Do you buy it? No, you wait and catch Rock. You don't need to run to it yet. Then we have Charmers. Just Charmers in general. I want to ask you a question because I personally, I, I really like the price of Dark. The Dark Charmer Gloomy. I think this card is undervalued and it's a great pickup. The question is, do you go, do you go and buy Starlight Red Charmers? Some people do, some people don't. Is Wind the Wind Charmer Vernon really worth it at $1,500? No. That's crap. That one's garbage. I think Charmers go in this order for me. I think number one is going to be Dark. Number two is going to be Lina. Number three, it's a combination of either Area or Hita. I personally like Hita more. And then number four is Area. Five, Osa. And number six, Win. That's my order. But somehow we have Charmers, Win being number one, Area being number two. It makes no sense.
Nevertheless, I think Charmin Starlight Rares are a great pickup. I think they will have a great value. And the reason why is because waifu value. And, and, and that's it. Put a period in that sentence. We're done with that. It's it. We're done. That's it. Extra deck monsters, so you know they'll have better value than a main deck monster. And once again, like I said, I want to emphasize this point. If I haven't said it already, they're waifus. <laughs> I love how like Konami's like, okay, we're gonna take away Predator Pinverde and Akande, so you can't easily go into DPE. So you, since you can't go into the DPE, you can't go artifact side. Right? And Yu-Gi-Oh players are like, right, Konami. That's exactly right. You got us. Real talk, dudes are going into TD and Wonder Magician and still doing it. Lulz. Konami, you seriously could have hit like I would I even though I don't like Verder Anaconda, I will stay with a meta of Verder Anaconda over a meta with artifact sci. Konami just has a bad habit of instead of hitting things directly, they hit things indirectly only for Yu-Gi-Oh! playbase to figure out a way to just go and make those cards good again. And they and we've done it already, like in record timing. If you want to get yourself a TG1 a magician, which is a great card, I hear it's good against, you know, procking your scythe on your opponent's turn. You're gonna want to go ahead and check it over here. There's a lot of great ones. Basil Legends is only a dollar. If you want the most expensive version, TG1 a magician, out of extreme force, first edition, ultimate rare, no big deal. The card price is only $68. Really? $68? It's not, that's actually not a lot of money for a card that literally stops people from using an extra deck. <laughs> Artifact Sai is such a bad card, and so is Mystic Mine. Now, I know I made a video the other day talking about Mystic Mine, and some people were like, V, Mystic Mine's great. It's like any other Floodgate. So you're saying Mystic Mine is like Rory Warlords, goes in match, they're going to be one. It's like, just like those, right? Okay, cool. How come those cards, other uh, Floodgates, you have to hard draw them? Where Mystic Mine... You can just search it out. Metaverse, Set Rotation, Demise of the Land, Terraforming. You have nine cards that at the end of resolution puts Mystic Mine on the board. But somehow we have to hard draw like Gozen. And we're going to combine those two and say they're equal, they're the same. Bro, they're not even kind of close, okay? They're not, like I'm talking Professional League MLB versus Pee Wee Kids Tennis. Like it's not even close. It's not even close. As far as, like, cards like Artifact Scythe, Konami, like, stop doing this, like, okay, that's a problem, but how can we five hand hit around the problem? Hit the problem, dude! Hit the problem! Why is Konami always doing this? They've done this so many times. They had this situation, like, it feels like, know what it feels like? It feels like Konami has a flat tire, so they're going to mechanic going, yeah, ignore the tires, replace the engine. That will make the car run faster. Well, I mean, yeah. You know what? Okay. It doesn't work for sure. Anyway, listen, I, I think there are a lot of crazy cards in this game. I think we're in a relatively good meta, minus literally two cards. <laughs> two cards makes this meta away from being in a really good meta. And I know a lot of you players might, might go, well, V, I still like Mystic Mind because it stops the tier one meta decks, and I'm playing my $10 deck I've been playing for four years, and I want to feel like a winner, and I can deck them out with that. I get that. I, I, I really do honestly get that. But you have to understand, like, nobody's playing at the casual level. This is high-tier competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. This is not like your go your locals where you're one guys at your locals who plays the same deck for like two years and bitches when he loses. Like it's not like that. It's a it's a totally different atmosphere and has to be respected as such. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, with that said, I do I do appreciate everybody watching this video. Thank you so much. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button, comment down below. Uh, new episodes gonna be coming up soon where you have the opportunity to buy amazing high end CR fuel centers. Uh, gorgeous ones like Shadow Construct, Katrina, uh, Acerola. Look at how beautiful that was. Sideways fuel centers. I got so much stuff here. And I got all the fuel centers finally loaded onto this website. And as time goes on, we're going to be populating more and more availability of these products to everybody. So if you want to go ahead and grab yours, get ready. I'm going to have it available. I have my old site still available. You can still buy via Cash App. Remember, you have one hour after purchase to send the money through, and I will lock down your track information. Within, within today or tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be able to get those field centers in and start shipping them out. I'll do a live stream, like I said, twitch.tv, underscore Paisano. Make sure to go check it out. It's your boy V. And you boys also have a great day.